Welcome, my name is Mike Campbell. I am one of the workshop assistants at the Center for Creativity. Uh, this is going to be a modified workshop of one that I would do in our workshop uh, because we do not have all of the supplies and I wanted to make sure that this would be accessible to people at home without them needing to go out and buy an X-Acto knife, cutting board, rubber cement. Uh, so this is meant to use things that you hopefully have already in your house. Um, you would also use a thicker paper like Bristol board or cardstock, um, but I will be using white printer paper. I just have a little pair of scissors. Um, you can use a table edge or you can use a ruler or whatever you have that is straight. That is not something that was um, told to be brought today, but that's because you can use your desk. I use a ruler to straighten things out because it's a little neater sometimes. Um, and then you can use glue. Like I said, rubber cement is easier. It dries quicker. This will take a little longer. You might have to hold things together, um, but this works. And if you wanted to, you could use tape. So the disadvantage of tape is that it shows. Um, for the example I have behind me with the dragon, um, I used a lot of tape, but I knew it would be far away and you couldn't see that. If you were doing this to put up on your wall or for something you wanted to display, you probably would not want to use tape. Um, so why paper sculpture or what is paper sculpture, I guess. Um, paper sculpture is pretty much anything you do with paper that combines multiple sheets. So origami and kirigami, which is cutting paper, are typically not necessarily paper sculpture if you are just using a single sheet. Uh, but when you see some of the complex origami or uh, kirigami and, like I said, that's similar to origami, but it's using cuts. In origami, you're not using cuts. Uh, if those are multiple sheets, then you could consider that a paper sculpture. Um, so there are many different techniques that I could show, but I decided to keep it to three different techniques you could use and combine. Um, and they were the three techniques that I used to make the dragon behind me. So just real quick, I wanted to screen share just what this looks like when it's lit. So um, if all you have is printer paper, why would you want to use that besides practice? Uh, white paper is really good for doing something like this, uh, where you're using lighting in a dark room to create dramatic effect with paper. So it's the same dragon as the one behind me, but uh, it looks a lot different when you have it lit up in a dark room. Whereas, you know, you can see that it doesn't look nearly as impressive in the light. <laughs> so that is what you could do with white paper. Uh, so I will switch over now to spotlighting this video. And I will start with the easiest of the three. So I'm going to be showing just a simple cutting and then um, either scoring or just having the paper to make some sort of 3D layer. And then I will show this, which as I get there, I'll talk about how it's a little more difficult, but it's doable with scissors. Um, this one was done with my X-Acto knife just because of time but there are several on the dragon that I used scissors for. Um, and then this is just, there are several different origami techniques that use folding like this, um, but this is a pretty simple one that I will show. Okay. So if you're following along, you'll just need for this first one, a piece of paper and your scissors. So there are, uh, there are a couple different ways you can do this. Um, you can either fold it in half, which if you were doing something like a leaf is fine, um, but there are instances where you won't want to fold it in half or you won't want to leave a crease at least. So we'll start sort of with the leaf in half because it's pretty easy. So 
So for the 3D leaf, you're just going to want to cut the leaf shape. And then you're going to want to make sure you're very intentionally leaving sort of a tab that was a little big. Um, but it will look like that. And then I'm gonna fold it back the whole way to where you cut. And then at the end of your leaf where you started the tab, just fold again. And that's pretty much all there is for that. So like I said, it might not look like much, but whenever you have, um, you can even kind of see with the shadow here how it plays off the light. Um, but when you have actual studio lighting, you'll be able to have some nice contrast with something as simple as this. So for, and this takes some practice, especially if you're not using, using the right tools or the best tools. Um, but you want to try not to fold the paper. You can pretty much do whatever shape you want. Um, if you didn't want it to be symmetrical, you could stop once you have your first cut and you could start doing different shapes. The only real hard rule here is that you want to sort of give yourself a little tab at the end of whatever you're doing. won't be able to do super large pieces like this because printer paper is pretty thin and won't hold up as nicely as a thicker paper, but you can still get some pretty interesting shapes with this. Um, and then the other thing you can do is you can fold these more to give yourself some different dimension to it. So you want to do this in an accordion fold type pattern. It doesn't have to be through the whole thing, but just something simple like that. So I'll give you a couple minutes to play around with this idea. Um, but if you were doing something like the dragon behind me, you could use this. Uh, to make dragon scales on whatever your uh, base paper is if you didn't want to have to have if you didn't want to use the dragon scales that I used in this folding technique you could do something like this to make scales cut a whole bunch of these If you have any questions, feel free just to ask, or you can type out questions in the chat.
Okay. So I will move along so we can get to the slightly more complex shapes. Um, so now we have this. <laughs> uh, so essentially what this is, is a whole bunch of cuts in a piece of paper in many different ways. So with an X-Acto knife, you're going to be able to get a lot of small cuts into this, um, which will help you really fold it in any direction you want. So the larger cuts you have, um, the more it's going to want to fold in certain ways, especially if you have cuts that are through the whole piece. So like that area right there is going to want to do its own thing because it's one long cut. And if you do a cut like that down the middle, then a lot of the times you'll essentially have two different folding halves. Which, this is all experimentation. As you play along with it, you'll be able to uh, kind of see how you can manipulate it in different ways. Even when you do it, it's going to all, it's going to fold how it wants to fold. Um, but you can take different corners to do it. Um, you can tuck them in to hold them together, or you can use glue, or you can tab it. So if I wanted to, I could say I wanted to have the ends meet here and here, to figure out So no matter, no matter, um, whatever you do with it, it's going to make a different shape. There's no hard or fast way to this, so I will just um, show you and you can follow along in whatever way you want. You don't have to cut the exact same shapes. So I'm going to start with our piece of paper and your scissors. Essentially cut a blob of some sort. Um, just try to stick to the edge as much as possible so you have some room to work with. So when I mean that, I mean... The more of the paper you cut away, the less you'll have to work with. But it also can have some interesting dips like this. This will be my shape that I'll use for the demo. When you're cutting the holes in the middle, you want to start as close to the edge as you feel comfortable. Um, so when I'm using, a, using an X-Acto knife, I made them big for this one, but um, a lot of the times I will cut fairly close and it will have a lot of really small holes, but we're using scissors uh, and you might not have a small pair, you might have a larger pair. So um, for this, you might want to cut closer towards the center. But essentially you're going to want to pick a place, make a little incision. Um, and if you wanted to do this um, similar to the other one where you have those same shapes, the mirror shapes, you can do this too. I think this might be a little easier to start out with if you did something like this. But like I said, the more shapes that you have that are big and through the whole piece, the uh, harder it's going to be to get some variety in what you're uh, forming with it. A lot of this will just be making incisions and then cutting out some sort of long shape. So 
and you want to get as that other as possible, and you also want some variety, variety horizontally and vertically. So you don't want them all going this way. Otherwise, your shape will be essentially a tube. This isn't all the same direction, but a lot of them are, so it's a natural inclination is to be a tube. Again, if you have questions, feel free to ask, but this one is just cutting away and making shapes. And they don't always have to be in this long arrow-like pattern, but this is just the best way to get um, some good folds. If you have if you have little spaces where uh, you can fit like a hopefully this shows up well on camera, um, but there's like a triangle shape right here that you can kind of see. Um, you can do those. Those just shouldn't be the bulk of what you're cutting um, to get interesting forms out of this. And it is just fine if it is jagged and not perfect. That is kind of the nature of scissors. When you're folding it together, you really don't notice. So something else you can do is going back to exercise one is you can give some tabs on the shape. So if you wanted to make some flat surfaces too, and that could add another layer um, to playing around with these shapes. So I'll show you what I just did here in a second. if it stays. Okay, so I just made a little dip there and there is a little flat surface there. So that can add some different dimensions to these pieces. 
And if you wanted to, like I said, this is where you would, like, I kind of like the shape like this. So um, I'm going to cheat and use tape because for demonstration purposes, I don't want to wait for white glue. So now I could, once you have it glued or taped together, now is when you could really play around with making different flat surfaces on it. So it could very quickly go from an organic shape to something that is, I mean, it's still kind of organic, but it'll look a little more mechanical with harsh lines. See if it's easier to see like this. The bad thing about working with white paper is that, you know, light reflects off white. So <laughs> camera light does not go well with working with white paper and trying to show detail. Okay, so let's move on to the third one. Switch back. All right, so I wanna make sure we have enough time for this one because when I've done this one in person, people have had some trouble getting it. This is a little difficult the first time you do it, so I will try because we have this nice overhead view to show you as much in detail as possible so you can get it the first time. Um, so you're going to start by simply folding it in half. And you want to make sure everything lines up as much as possible because there is some precision to the shape. We're going to unfold it, and now you're going to fold from the end into the middle for both sides. And like I said, try to line everything up as best as possible. All right, then one more time. So we have eight folds in it. This one will probably be your most tricky one. So you want to make this 
easier, you can try to accordion fold it now as you go. Um, or if you have a different way that works easier for you because we're going to accordion fold in the end, whatever works. Um, this just helps you line up like once you fold it like that one time. Um, this will just help you line up with the next one maybe a little easier. So for these, they can be hard creases. You are going to eventually go back with it. If this were a thicker paper, you would want to do a gentle crease for now. Because with thick paper, doing a hard crease and then going the other way will break it. With this, it doesn't. Somehow I already am not lined up. Okay, if you have not already, so what you will do now is accordion fold it so you have a shape like this. So you can do this as many times as you want. The more folds you do, the harder it's going to be. So we could have just done two folds. Um, that's a little too easy, I think. <laughs> this one's not that complicated. It's still easy to fold for this next step. Uh, but I did do on the dragon uh, one more fold for each of these. So instead of, what do I have eight here? I did 16 folds. It took quite a bit longer because the creases were not as nice. That is where the ruler really came in handy um, to try and get some sort of good crease. But once we have this and now is where you, if you didn't already hard crease it, you can do so now. But what you're going to want to do is have it folded like this. And it doesn't matter which end or how you start it, as long as you keep going in the same direction from there. So I will start with my top right corner and you're just going to fold it. Here's where if you want to use a ruler or a table, um, it will come in handy, but you're going to want to fold it and give yourself a little triangle. And again, if we were using thicker paper, I wouldn't, I would say do not hard crease it, but for white paper like this, hard crease it and then reverse it and hard crease again. Once you get a comfort or a feel for doing this and you move to a more difficult paper, it'll help you uh, sort of figure out how to navigate <laughs> a thicker paper where you can't do hard creases. Um, so you're gonna have, let's see if it shows up, you're going to have your nice line through it like that. So you're gonna go from the bottom of that line and Essentially, everything's going to be in the same direction. So we're going to go from top right corner down. If you were doing it from left top corner down, you're going to keep going this way. So what I mean by that is going from where this, there we go. This bottom line is we're going to, oh, nope, fold another triangle. And we're going to line that up with our paper. And we want to try and do this nice 90 degree angle. If it's not perfect your first time, that's okay. This is something you have to work at. 
and then similar to the first one, go back and fold the other way. So you will have And now, just from the bottom of this last one we made, go a nice 90 degrees, or as close to 90 degrees as possible. And just repeat that the whole way down. Just going from the bottom of the one you just made, You will know if you're really off from 90 degrees when you fold it backwards because it won't line up. <laughs> but as long as it's close, you're going to probably be okay. All right, so just give me a thumbs up or let me know that you have finished folding and I will show you the next step. Eric, are you still following along? Okay, so I will start demonstrating the next part. So you're going to want to unfold and you will see a nice piece of paper like this. So we're going to start from the top, which you're going to want to start. The easiest way to start is where you have your nice arrows so my bottom is a little imperfect here and you can see how there's some space between that bottom arrow and that so I don't want to start here where the arrow goes the whole way up to the top which will be the top of our paper. So what you're going to want to do is you're going to take the arrow and you're going to want to from the back fold it inward and you're just going to do that for all of them. This is going to be the easiest part. <laughs> and then we have this when you're done. So now fold your paper over. This is where the arrows are. This is going to be at the bottom. Starting with the end here, we're going to fold up like that. Just go the whole way across on this row. Holding up. Just 
So this is where if we had thick paper, you would not have wanted to do a hard crease because now is when you'll want to do your hard crease. But like I said, with this paper, it's fine <laughs> that we did that already because it'll make it a lot easier uh, to do all of these as we go down. So now flip over and you're probably already going to have this next line pretty well formed. You're just going to want to make sure you're reinforcing all of those creases. And essentially, we are just going to repeat that. So flip it back over, going from where you left off. So this next line, starting from the end. And it does get a little trickier as we get towards the bottom. If the middle gives you trouble, you can sort of start working it from the other end. It'll help you with any sort of wrinkles or puffs that you created. just like before, flip it over. And again, these bottom ones are going to be easier because that's just how it goes. Okay, so I have finished all of mine and this last little tail here will need to be folded in the same direction as whatever fold you just made. So this is going to be a top fold and the little point here will also be a top fold. It won't start going down like we would in the past. After you have all of that, work it all together see that it won't it won't be perfectly folded just yet but now is where you can really push everything together And while alone, there's, you know, not too much you can do with this. You could always color or paint or use colored pencil or marker or whatever, the different arrows. So this way it has some color variation to it. Um, if you make a couple of these, there are several things you can do with the dragon. I did uh, dragon scales and a couple other different elements for that. You can also use these for lamps. Um, because they curve pretty well, put about 
three of them together and you can make a paper lamp. You can do different, you know, anything you really, anything you wanted really. Um, with a sculpture, this is just an individual element. Um, this is the easiest. There are a lot of different shapes like this uh, that you can find videos for online. But it is a way to get different textures into some sort of paper sculpture that you are making. And that is all I have. Just pull over to the dragon real quick so you can sort of see close up some of the details. Like I said, um, I did 16 for these. This one is the same size that I used the claw and then I used um, some of the organic shape for that. And then I didn't show doing this, but this is making one of those organic shapes, except it's all symmetrical. So I just folded it in half and cut everything evenly. So this way I could have two halves of it. Um, same with the bottom half there. And then I cut some of um, the folded origami shape to make a little crown head apparatus and then some of the big folds for another piece for the back of the head. All right, thank you for coming and if you have questions, you can answer them. If not, of course, as always, you can email us at creative.pit.edu. And thanks for coming.